serious. Tonight on 3D Firing Line, we're going to have an in-depth examination of a remake of that 1969 classic motion picture entitled Midnight Cowboy. Now, this particular remake is done in 3D, and it stars those two veteran character actors, Dr. Tung and Woody Tobias Jr. Now, there are a lot of people right now saying that this uh, 3D remake could be the final nail in the coffin, <laughs> so to speak, for all these 3D movies right now. Well, tonight we're gonna find out as we take a look at some clips, and then afterwards, we'll have a panel discussion. So right now, let's take a look at some clips from Midnight Cowboy 2 in the miracle of 3D. I'll have another one. And by the way, this guy stiffed you. Howdy, y'all. All have a seven and seven, y'all. Oh, by the way, that is one colossal looking shirt you've got. Are y'all addressing me, y'all? <laughs> I was just saying, that cowboy shirt is one of the most colorful things I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> this? Why, this is one of my more subdued confections, y'all. Y'all should see the one I purchased at Gimbal's today, y'all. That one's got rhinestones and sequences on it, y'all. Would y'all like to see it? <laughs> By the way, my name is Enrico Rizzo, and I'm from the Bronx. Please to make y'all acquaintance, y'all. I'm gonna buy y'all a little drink there, little buddy. My name is Joe Buck, y'all. And I'm all from El Paso, Texas, y'all. I can hardly tell by that cheap accent. <laughs> You're not really that dumb. No human being could possibly be that dumb. I'm a hustler! A hustler! Uh, I get around pretty fast myself, but I don't go around bragging about it. You're absolutely hopeless, you know that? You're hopeless! I hustle women! I provide them with sexual satisfaction and they pay me for my services. You're stud. Oh, please. I despise the unsavory connotation of that word. Yes, I know what you mean, because, you see, I happen to be in the stud business myself. I'm in the game. I, I have a stable of clientels that I represent. And uh, it seems to me that a man in your sexual position needs some form of management. I don't know why I should trust you. Maybe it's your, your trusting eye. With that knowing mole on your cheek. All right. You shall be my manager. Partners. Partners, Ratso. And don't call me Ratso. Your name is Ratso. My name is Enrico Ratso. I heard everyone call you Ratso. It's not Ratso. So I'll call you Ratso if I, I want. I won't listen to it. Uh, Ratso. I don't have to Ratso. Oh, Ratso. Ratso, Ratso, Ratso. Ratso, Ratso, Ratso. Ratso, Ratso, Ratso. Everybody's talking at me I don't hear a word they're saying Only the echoes of my mind People stopping, staring I can't see their faces Only the shadows of their eyes Get up on the curb. Perhaps you don't Get know up on the curb. Get up on the curb. What are you doing yelling at the man? Well, I you were clearly in violation of the traffic signal. I was a green light. Was it was not a green light. It, it was a red light. It was green. It was a red light. Green, red, green, red light. Green, red, light. Green, red, green, red. Stop green. it. Stop it right now. If you were in El Paso right now, that cab driver would have flattened you like a steam shovel. And if you were in El Paso right now, you'd still have your accent. Everybody's talking at me Well, I'll 
tell you why you're not making any money. It's because of that goofy cowboy outfit. <laughs> and don't polish your boots with my coat. I paid over 300 for it. In what currency? Pesos? 300. Just shut up and make this do. Well, all I know is that you haven't scored once since you've been here. Oh, we've been counting, have we? Mr. Gucci, Mr. Fashion Plate. I haven't exactly seen a bevy of Miss America beauties come marching through your fashionable apartment here, have I? I didn't see you go out with Miss Marianne Mobley last night, did I? Or maybe when I drifted off, I had a little nap. She well, came in, you had a brief affair. Why didn't you wake me? Tell me. Maybe I don't profess to be a big hustler like you. At least I carry myself with a certain degree of dignity. Dignity. What? Dignity. Dignity? Dignity. Dignity, you carry yourself with dignity. Dignity. Oh. At least pe people don't laugh at me for the way I dress. You're absolutely right. They laugh at you for other reasons. <laughs> now look, I happen to dig the way I look. The chicks get off on this Western motif. So let's just drop the whole subject and have our stew, all right? Mmm, this stew looks delightful. With such succulent morsels of meat. <laughs> Midnight Cowboy 2. All right, we're going to discuss Midnight Cowboy 2 right now, and I'm going to introduce the panel to you. Over here on my left is Dr. Tongue, who has appeared in countless three-dimensional horror films, including 3D House of Stewardesses, 3D House of Cats, and most recently, 3D House of Pancakes. <laughs> Sitting next to him is Woody Tobias Jr., who is perhaps best known as Bruno. And his film credits include 3D House of Stewardesses, 3D House of Cats, 3D House of Pancakes, and his uh, quickly forgotten solo venture, Death Motel. <laughs> Sitting on my right is the eminent film critic for New Yorker magazine, author of many books, including Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, I Lost It at the Movies, and many more, Pauline Kale. And there you have our uh, distinguished panel. All right, now panel, let's open this up for discussion. A Midnight Cowboy 2. Let's talk about it. Let's get some feedback. Pauline, uh, what did you think? I, I was not a fan of the original Midnight Cowboy, but, but this, th th this movie is a vacuous, cheap, uh, low-budget attempt at um, trying to get back a past success by, by luring young teenagers uh, with a worn-out visual gimmick. It, it's depressing, really. It, it has no style. Well, Count Floyd, I would be remiss in saying that the movie didn't have its flaws. I don't languish in that kind of naivete. Some of the performers, of course, uh, missed the mark in terms of having a convincing character. Just what do you mean by that? Just, just, uh, who in particular are you, are, are you criticizing? Uh, all I'm saying is, one of the leads in the movie uh, may have missed the boat in terms of what Stanislavski said about actors creating a believable character, i.e. a gigolo from Texas, par exemple. Par exemple? Par exemple, a gigolo from Texas, huh? <laughs> you know I had trouble with that character. You know I couldn't get the El Paso drawl. Did you once come up to me? On the set and say, look, I've got some constructive criticism for you, Dr. Chung. Not once did you ever do that to me. Why do you start hurling insultments at me? Especially on public television. Uh, you know I hate to be a disruptive force during principal photography. Oh, you're hardly around for principal photography. Well, was, you don't even you, know the story, why, do you? Why don't, Doctor, he, why he, don't he did you not even know the ask, end of the picture. I had to tell him the story. Ask the director who he liked. Ask better. the director, ask the director. You only ask the director oh, where the coffee and oh, donuts oh, were. Please, That's all you have to no, wait a please, let's stick to the point of discussion. Could you two just give me one good reason that you would choose to do a remake of Midnight Cowboy, especially in 3D? Why? All you want to know is why? That's all you want to know is why? <laughs> was his idea I had nothing wait, to do with wait. it. Wait, all right, I'll tell you why. It was because, well, we, we saw the success of Midnight Cowboy. We figured if we could do a tenth of that business, well, you know, we'd be... Uh, we'd be sitting in gravy. Exactly. But, <laughs> but uh, to be honest with you, uh, I don't know why we did it, all right? I don't know why. Well, uh, as is the custom on our show, we now turn the questioning over to our guest moderator, 
the Pittsburgh midget. Steve? I've been listening here for quite a while, and a lot of rationalization is all I've been hearing. So I got all kind of questions. And the first one is, which one ends is Pauline Kale? What kind of question is that? That's Pauline Kale. Weren't you here when I introduced the panel? What'd you do? You came in late, didn't you? Yeah, I come in late. You got me driving in here in rush hour traffic. You got me coming out Route 28 through Sharpsburg. I gotta go through that bypass in Highland Park. How am I supposed to get in here on time and know who Pauline Kale is? Ah, uh, you little creep. All right, just forget it, all You right? should have put me up in a motel like I asked you. Shut up! You don't get in any motel. I'm in late for the show. What good are you? Uh, well, let's go to a final consensus now on this film. Now, what did we think about it? What is the final, um... Well, I liked it. I liked it a lot. And I urge everyone to go and see it. Now I'm confused. <laughs> Me too. You know what? I'm gonna go to my favorite theater right now and just see a whole bunch of movies. Good movies, bad movies, all kinds of movies. I don't even know the difference anymore. So sometimes I think that I'm in the movies myself. Today, I'm Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> Oh. Well, there you have it. There, there's a, a, a fine case of uh, cinematic schizophrenia right there. She's seen too many films. Oh, is this film a hit or a bomb or what? I have a career to think about. That is not for you to ask. That's of Count Floyd's question. Of firing line, I can fire a It's his show. Like this is Count oh, Floyd's oh, 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 oh. That means time's up. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Count Floyd saying goodbye from 3D firing line. Have a good night. Good night. You're always good. Night. You never listen. That's the problem with you as an actor. You never listen. Give and take. Thank you very much.